Last week on Homestead How, we closed on our small town movie theater. It was a dream come true. We were all very excited, including the girls. We went inside the movie theater and we had a bit of a fun day. We watched several movies on the big screen. <laughs> Many that I've never seen before on really? the big screen. And we played some video games. And then the very next day, Jen and I had to go to a special planning city council meeting to see if we could get permission to reopen the movie theater as a movie theater. That was kind of stressful. Thankfully, it worked out. And in fact, at the end of the meeting, everyone started clapping and they were coming over and saying they're really excited to have the movie theater opening again soon, which was awesome. I put a Facebook post up. It reached 30,000 people. Got over 200 comments, all well wishes and people supporting us opening the movie theater up. And all of that credit should go to Dawn and Dave Anderson. Everyone loves the theater because of them. It's our goal to continue running it as they have family friendly with fair prices going forward. But the outreach from the city has been amazing. Uh, we feel like little celebrities walking around town. I was in Quick Trip the other day and people were stopping me saying, I saw your YouTube video last week. I saw your post on Facebook. Uh. <laughs> Jen did some touch-ups and painted the front door and people were driving by yelling, yay, we're opening the movie theater back up. We even uh, put the marquee sign up ourselves for the first time. That was a lot of fun. People were yelling when we were doing that as well. So really exciting times. We got some huge news yesterday. We got approved by Universal. We'll be able to open on September 16th. And in today's video, we're gonna have a lot of fun on week two, and we're gonna share our grand reopening plans for September 16th. Let's get started. Take it. I Take it. <laughs> I'm trying to move it out of the way. So our number one goal is to reopen the movie theater. People are asking, what's the delay? Why can't you open right away? Well, we've been driving to the movie theater every day and we've been filling out contracts with all the various studios. There's a lot of paperwork we need to complete and revisions and back and forth with the studios in order to open. The good news is we just got approved with Universal and our very first movie we're gonna play is gonna be a throwback movie. going to be Back to the Future 1 on Friday, September 16th. We're going to have a grand reopening party. We're partnering with a company. I'll show you a picture on the screen. And this guy's from Madison and he has a replica time machine DeLorean from the movie. It looks amazing and he's going to be bringing it Friday, September 16th. It's going to be parked right outside Montello Theater. We're going to have tons of prizes and giveaways. It's going to be a fun reopening party and you can see the DeLorean time machine thanks to WisconsinTimeMachine.com. It's going to be a lot of fun. More details to follow. What'd you do? Made popcorn. First batch of popcorn at Montello Theater that Jen and I made all by ourselves. Well done, helped. We've designed some t-shirts and some koozies and some other things that we're going to have available at the grand reopening September 16th. So we had a busy week at our new movie theater and I almost forgot I did this. I put a bunch of the history onto a poster. I don't know how this is going to turn out. I haven't looked at this yet. Katie started opening it and I told her don't open it yet because I wanted to see it first. Ooh, that's kind of cool. The Opera House in 1878. Then Frank Dodge did a big facelift in 1914. You can see these pillars here are the ones that we still have today, which is now. And I actually climbed up one of these pillars. There's a ladder in one of these. It goes all the way to the roof. There's a flashlight. Do you want me to grab it? Oh, you know, that was downstairs. You're gonna fall. Does it go down? I can't see anything. This is crazy. It's pitch black, okay. Look at it. It goes all the way up and then there's a little hatch up there and you see a light up in the hatch. That's not scary. And you could stick your head out the top of the roof there if you wanted to. This is some of the earliest history. This is Frank Dodger's house and here's the opera house the movie theater we're in right now. This house still stands here today. In fact, the neighbor gave me a big tour the other day very kindly. This is, these were ads that were in the 60s. Elvis Presley. So it kind of goes through the whole history. It's just some random clippings. I was going to hang this up on the wall downstairs. I've been working on this. I got this menu system set up. 
that's just a smart TV and I found a really cool app where you can um, design a page or a menu and you can just put it up there and it'll rotate through them, it'll do animations and it's just a fire stick, you just go to the app. Katie's got her point of sale system set up here, this is free, we're using Square and she basically went through and like if someone says I want a medium popcorn, there's a little picture of a medium popcorn and then it adds it on the total there, you could charge them, we can take cash or credit cards. And I put this whole book together. Ta-da! The new version, version 2. This version has history of ownership in it and a whole bunch of other changes. That's exciting. So there's supposed to be 50 of them in here. I think there are 50 in that box, I guess so. So we're selling this for $20 and the funds will go to support the theater. We'd like to eventually put in a new um, air conditioning system. Right now the one is behind the stage. I want to be able to show people behind the stage and the old piano and the one we have now is from the 80s. So all proceeds for this purchase of this book will go to support the theater so they can be open for generations to come. We're having an absolute blast. Yesterday, a gentleman named John came to the theater. He's the coolest guy I've ever met. He used to be a projectionist here in the 70s. He knows this building inside and out. I'm fascinated with the history. He was showing me all of this. So this is our digital projector. This was the former film projector that they had for many years. But before that, we had other projectors downstairs. One of them is an arc light projector. There's two pieces of metal with an incredible amount of electricity and they get pushed together like this and they create an arc like you would with a welding machine, like an arc welder. And that was the light. Emma! Get it! Do this. Oh my gosh, where are you putting this? On this table. You guys okay? Put it up! Yes! Yes! Alright, now help me. Help me roll. Oh, look at the, the gauges. Perfect. Do you guys have any idea what this thing does? No. You got a big pump there, it's going to be hard. You might have to lift it a little bit. Okay, we have to turn it. It's just a beaut. Why do we have two projectors? Here is a reel of film. This reel of film is only about 20 minutes. So if you had an hour and 20 minute movie, you'd need six reels of this film. Well, how would you do that? That would be like this big if it was one reel. John taught me this yesterday. I should know this since we own a movie theater now. You had projector one here with that reel on it. You had projector two with reel number two on it. Reel one would go for 20 minutes. The projectionist would sit here and watch it. And then on the screen, in the little corner of the screen, you'd see a little dot. And that would tell you it's almost time to change. And they would have to synchronize and they would have to turn this projector off and turn this one on. They would start projector two and that would be the second reel and that would start rolling and the people in the audience, including myself, who've watched thousands of movies, never even knew that was all going on behind the scenes. Well, that's only two of the six reels of film. So then he would have to go over to this projector, get the other one. He would take that reel off that just finished and he would take it to this machine right here. This is the original from the 1930s. National Gold's Automatic Rewind. This is a motor in here, and this is a rewinder. You'd put the film in here and an empty reel, and you'd turn this on, and it would rewind it. The other thing was, like, okay, is this not complicated enough? They had to do all of this. Well, the other thing was, you had these little baby reels. You know what these are, Katie? Trailers. These are trailers. This is a trailer for the movie Frozen, very popular movie, on film. We have it right here. Well, they would have to, they would have to splice these in beforehand. So that's what this machine was here. I'm not going to take this one out, but they would put this on here, roll it out, and you'd have this light. And John showed me this yesterday. This was one of the sp uh, splicing machines they had, and this thing is an antique. So you take the film in here, and then you take your next trailer and you put it in here, and you take maybe a little piece of tape or some glue. They did it different ways over the years, and you push these down, and you'd splice that film together in your trailers. By the end of it, you'd have a big movie, and then you had these down here. What do you think these are? Well, this would have your trailer in it. This might have your next trailer in it. This might have reel one, two, three, four, five, six for the movie. All of that splicing and everything all has to be reversed, and all of those reels go back into the packaging and they get sent back. Light, Light or good mix. Out, out. This is heat. No, it's not 
But I saw those. They just like nice. fries, huh? Yeah. Nineteen twenty-seven from Chicago, Illinois, made in the United States. There's no light bulb in here, so let's take a closer look and I'll show you what I mean. So this is a carbon rod. This right here is also a carbon rod. You start this out and these two rods, one is positive, one is negative. They're right next to each other, they touch, and it's like um, arc welding. Huge amount of electricity goes through them, they arc and it makes an incredibly bright light that then gets reflected off of this glass mirror right here. The light gets reflected off of the mirror and shoots through this way out the projector and then the film goes over it. There's no light bulb in this. Could you imagine? So the projectionist had a huge job and they're really underappreciated. They would have to sit here and watch this, start this up and make sure that it's maintained. They would have to come in here and maybe adjust it. They could watch on the screen and maybe it's getting a little darker or browner and then they would adjust it and they would move these in and out so that they were just making the perfect amount of light. But that's not the crazy part. So the crazy part is these rods, they only last one hour. How long is a typical movie, Katie? Hour and a half, maybe two hours? What do you do after one hour's up and this rod's gone and the light goes out? Well, what you did, which was also very fascinating to me, was you went to the other arc projector because you had two of these in your projection room when you were watching a movie. And the projectionist's job was not only to sit there and swap out all the reels of film. During the film, they would have this projector with these carbon rods making light for one hour. They would have a 15 minute reel of film on here. When that 15 minute reel of film was almost dead, he would have to quickly switch over to the other projector, get that film started, and then s turn this one off and then turn the other one on so no one even knows that all of a sudden you're watching film from a completely different projector. Then while that one's on, they would take the film off of this one, put it in the rewinder, load the third reel of film on there, and then when they hit the one hour mark, they would also have to change out these rods, relight it, adjust it, and get it back perfect again. All doing this in a metal enclosed tin room. Our projection room up there is covered in metal on the top and the bottom, and it used to have it on the sides and the walls. And the reason for that was the film they used to use was incredibly flammable. You could light that film on fire and it, nothing would put it out. You could submerge it in water while it was lit on fire and it would not go out. It will just burn out till it's gone. So the projectionist's job was incredibly dangerous. They're working with this highly flammable film in a metal box with an arc, uh, it's like an arc welding open flame just burning to light the whole thing up. Not just one, but two of them on the other projectors while they're managing everything and changing the reels of film. And meanwhile, people are just sitting down there in the theater watching the film, completely oblivious to all that's going on up there. I'm pretty sure this would be the projector head where the light shines through here. And that makes sense because that looks like that fits with that. So this makes the light. It goes through here. You put an incredible amount of light through that hole there and then the film comes down through there and gets projected out and then you'd put a lens on here and there's lenses upstairs so I bet you some of those still fit on here. So we're continuing our week, our first week owning the movie theater and we keep finding amazing little treasures. I set up a little tool bench area here but down here, I have to turn my light on, I found something. They're posters, they're movie posters and the previous owner Dawn wanted to take all the posters with her so I told her hey you accidentally left some posters here I'll set them aside for you and she kindly said finders keepers they're yours to keep so there's a whole bunch of them back there and that's why Alyssa's here no can you crawl back here quick just go right here these are seats you can just go over the seats and hand them to me you should have brought my headlamp with there's a whole bunch of them there could be some classics back there there's so many cobwebs yeah well you got to clean back there too it's under the steps in the basement of a 140 year old movie theater what could possibly go wrong it's gonna be so much fun that, opening that's these that's all i can do just go no you go you live on a homestead I'll, I'll hold the camera. i'm not going fine i'll go okay i just i don't have the patience to wait any longer you could just crawl over the top of it take it where? Oh. Take it. Take it. Let go. Take it. I can see you. You don't have to say take, take it. it. It's hard to record because I'm. Take it. Oh my god, you just squished the camera. Take it. Like. Take it. <laughs> I can't. Let's 
trying to move it out of the way. All right, let's go open these and see what we got. Let me posters. Okay, so this is the first one. Mark Wahlberg, The Happening. 2008. Mark Wahlberg is hot. 2008. Set it on there. Are they all the same? Oh, hey. Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four. <gasps> There's another one? What? That's Jackie Chan. He does his own stunts. Oh, I didn't even see Jackie his face. Oh, uh, oh, I know what it is. I forgot what it's That's called. a good one. Oh, uh, it's Rush Hour 3. Rush Hour 1 would have been better. You should actually keep that up. Right here? I don't want to get mad. Just show me a little and I'll see if I can guess it. I did. Wait, you can see this. It literally said out of the thing. Wild Hogs! Do it towards me. Wait, before you show it, I can tell you. It's uh, Tim Allen, Martin Lawrence, and uh, the guy from Fargo. William H. Macy. Is it John Travolta? Am I right or am I right? William H. Macy, Martin Lawrence, John, John Travolta, and Tim Allen. Yeah. Boom. That's a funny movie. I'm going to be rated. Yeah. Mostly gets a hangover. <laughs> what is it? What's the movie? Game plan. Game plan. So here's a little tour of our movie theater. It's kind of dark in here because it's a movie theater. But we have the PlayStation hooked up so we can watch Netflix, HBO. We can play video games. We have... 145, 150-ish seats. Really nice soundproofing that they put in. Great speaker system. There's a speaker up there, speaker over there, speaker over there, speaker over there. It's kind of cool too, we got ceiling fans and I don't know if it's hard to see or not on camera, but this is a really large screen for such a small town movie theater. This thing is huge. So right now, Alyssa, Katie, and myself have the entire Movie theater to ourselves. We're meeting with the concession wholesaler person so we could get candy order and nachos and slushy stuff lined up. And now we're going to dim the lights and we're going to watch a movie. And this movie is amazing watching it on the big screen with the audio we have here. So it's been a very fun first week owning the movie theater and getting things set up and ready and we appreciate all of the support from the community. We're so happy that we're able to announce that we can officially open September 16th. It's going to be a grand reopening party. As I mentioned, we're going to give away a bunch of prizes and we're going to have the DeLorean time machine out front. We're going to show Back to the Future 1 on September 16th, which is the Friday. On the 17th, we're going to show Back to the Future 2. And on the 18th, we're going to show Back to the Future 3. After the grand reopening party, we hope to get back to regular movies the weekend after that. More to come. We appreciate all of the support. A lot of people on Facebook were asking how can they support the theater? Could they do a fundraiser or anything like that? The best way to support the theater is to visit our website, montellotheater.com and purchase gift cards. We have those for sale right now. They're digital. You can purchase them. You can send them now, send them later. Uh, another way to support the theater is by sharing this YouTube video with everyone that you can. Subscribe, like, leave the thumbs up. That does help us out a lot. Thanks for watching and now here are some of our favorite photographs we took on and around our homestead and movie theater this week.